Hello guys, how are you? Welcome again to our pet online class. Remember, this is our class number 10 and will be available from Monday to Wednesday. So let's start now. Here we have our index. First, we're going to check some recommendation, then classwork, homework, and at the end, we're going to check your workbook. So let's start working, guys. Now, here we have the word recommendations. So guys, take out your notebook. You are going to prepare your notebook. And here we have, write 10 cultural attractions in San Luis Potosí. Imagine after this quarantine ends, your friends from other countries or from other cities are going to come to San Luis Potosí. But you have to advise them with 10 cultural attractions. So please pause the video and write the 10 cultural attractions in San Luis Potosí. Well guys, I hope you're finished. Now take out your student book on page 114 and 115. Ready? So here we have. Now guys, I have a question for you. Whose recommendations do you trust the most? For example, if you're going to a restaurant, if you're going to the cinema, if you're going to a place, whose recommendations do you trust the most? Your friends, your family recommendations, or recommendations from experts? Choose one and write it in exercise number one in your book. Ready? Well, in my case, I would say experts. Remember, it's my opinion, so you don't have to choose experts. However, I think friends are a good option too because maybe you have similar likes. Now, here we have, in your book, you have order the following options from one to five. One is the most trustworthy. So you are going to order these sentences from one to five. Which is the most important for you? Reviews in a newspaper and magazines? Online comments by members of the public? Friends and family? The tourist information office? And famous people from one to five. Please pause the video to number your options. Well guys, now that you have finished, let's start with our classwork. So the first thing we're doing today, we're going to listen to people talking about the same tourist attractions. Then you are going to write, what do they agree about? What do they disagree about? So please take notes in your book or in your notebook, however you prefer. This is for exercise two. Let's listen. One, the next place you might like to go if the weather isn't great is the Anthropology Museum, which is all about the native people of Mexico and Central America. Now, I highly recommend this place because it's such a beautifully designed museum. There is simply so much to see. You won't want to miss the Stone of the Sun, which is a large stone Aztec calendar and one of the most famous sites in Mexico. There are some amazing examples of Olmec heads, the biggest statues of heads you will probably ever see, and lots of other attractions that are well worth experiencing. Make sure to plan your visit, though. You can easily spend all day there, which will appeal to the historians among you but I have to say I got tired after about three hours. One more thing, I would recommend hiring a tour guide who won't charge much, but will make the visit much more informative. Right, the next rainy day idea is... Two. Guadalupe? Hey. You've been to the Anthropology Museum, haven't you? Yes, I've been a couple of times. Why? We have visitors coming next week, and I'd like to take them there. Is it any good? Oh, it's great. You'll love it. What is there to do? All sorts of things. 
I don't normally like museums and that sort of thing, but there's a lot to see there. Like what? They have the Stone of the Sun there. What's that? You know, the Aztec calendar. You've probably seen copies around the city. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. And it's in Chapultepec Park, right? Yes, not far from the center, but it's worth getting there when it opens. If you want, I'll send you a link with directions. I'm sure I'll find it no problem. Did you pay for a tour guide? No, I wouldn't bother if I were you. That's probably pretty expensive. I'd buy a guidebook instead, which you can take home with you. Great. Well, thanks for that. Any other tips? Take an umbrella if it rains, because there are a lot of outdoor spaces with things to see in the gardens. Right. I'll keep my fingers crossed for sun. Now, guys, let's see. What do they agree about? Well, they agree that the Anthropology Museum is a great place to visit and that you should not miss the zone of the sun. What do they disagree about? Well, they disagree about the benefit of paying for a tour guide. They think that's, a, that's not a good idea. Now for the next exercise, guys, you are going to look at the useful language box. Here we have it. In this box, we have useful language to ask for recommendations, to make recommendations, and to show reservation. So you are going to read the expressions and you are going to underline with blue the ones that are said by friends. With green, the ones that are said by TV presenters. And with pink, the ones that can be said by both of them. So please pause the video and underline the phrases or the expressions with the different colors. So let's check. First, we're going to check the ones in blue, the ones that are said by friends. If you don't have colors there, you can just write the letter. Here we have. Is it any good? You have to go. I'll send you the link. It was okay. All right, I suppose. I wouldn't bother if I were you. I didn't think it was great. Now we have the ones for TV presenter. We have, you won't want to miss this. I highly recommend it. It's a must see. It's appeal to anyone who enjoys And now we have the ones that can be saved by both. Is it worth watching, seeing, visiting, reading? What do you think about? It's worth watching. It's well worth seeing. You might like it if you have nothing else to do. If you enjoy it, you'll love I don't normally like, but I would recommend it to people who. So please guys, practice the pronunciation of these phrases. And if you have any question about the, the meaning of one of them, remember we have Google Classroom platform, so you can ask there any question. I think all of them are clear, but anyways, if you have any question, please ask us. Now, here we have another notebook activity. This is a notebook activity for class number 10. Here we have, for each category below, write the name of one example that you would recommend and one that you wouldn't recommend. So in your notebook, you are going to write a book and you are going to write the name of one book that you recommend and the name of one book that you don't recommend. Then the same for a TV show, a movie, 
a work of art, a theater production, and an online video clip. So please pause the video to answer in your notebook. Remember, we're checking your notebook when we go back to school. Now here we have, guys. We're going to read an email you have it on page 153 from Macarena who lives in Valparaiso in Chile. What things does she recommend to her friend Aki about her city? Well, first we're going to check the structure. We have, look at the writing tips on page 151 about beginning and ending informal emails. This is an informal email because it's from one person to a friend. So it's informal. We start with our greeting, as always. Now we have, in the first paragraph, respond to any recent communication you have received from the person you are writing to. And we have the expression, thanks for your postcard. Next one, order your main points about the place logically. Include at least three or four pieces of information. Here we have two paragraphs with the information. Then, use connectors to join ideas. Guys, by this time that you are in PET, you should know use connectors. So use as much connectors as you can. So use as many connectors as you can. Use the last paragraph to look ahead to future communication. Write back soon or a meeting. So you say goodbye, being a nice person. And at the end, of course, we have best wishes, Macarena. Now let's read the email together. When we're reading the email, I want you to underline what Macarena recommends. Here we go. Hi, Aki. Thanks for your postcard. What a surprise, I never get postcards. Nara looks like a fun city and it was great hearing your news. I'm glad everything is going well for you. I'm sorry this isn't a postcard, but you wanted me to tell you about Valparaiso and I can tell you more in an email. I guess what the city is most famous for is a museum dedicated to Pablo Neruda, who was a famous Chilean poet. The museum is okay, but unless you are a poetry fan, I wouldn't bother paying to go in. The views over the city are fantastic, though, and free. What I really love about the city is location. It's so mountainous and next to the ocean, so I'd recommend spending a lot of time just exploring. I love taking the ascensories which are like very small trains on the steep hills. It's also well known for the paintings that decorate the streets and buildings. There's color everywhere. And finally, you can't come to Valparaiso without spending a day on the beach. Our fishing harbor, La Caleta Portales, is a wonderful place to relax, but also to watch the fishermen and market traders. Anyway, I hope you get to visit me here one day so you can see it for yourself. Even better though would be if I could come and see you in Japan. Best wishes, Macarena. Now guys, that we have just finished reading the email, please pause the video and check your answers. Underline the recommendation that Macarena mentions. So let's check. She recommends the views of the city from Pablo Neruda Museum, but not the museum itself, unless you're a poetry fan. Here we have. She recommends exploring the city and its colorful street art. Here we have it. She recommends taking the ascensores. Here we have it. She recommends the beach. Here we have it. And at the end, she recommends harbor at the Caleta Portales.
Okay, guys, now you have read the text, the little email. We are going to move on to exercise 9. It says, relative clauses are a good way of adding extra information. Read the email on page 153 again. Where could these relative clauses go in the email? So, as you know, relative clauses are just extra information. So, the email is not incomplete per se, but you can add more than it's already there. So, let's read the sentences and then you're going to fit it in the text. 1. Which is why I think artists love the place so much. 2. Which is where I'm going later with some friends. 3. Which I got this morning. 4. Which I'm not. So, how do you know where does it go? Well, I recommend you know what you're talking about, right? Which is why, why? It's talking about a reason, right? Which is where? It's talking about a place. I got this morning, what did he get? What is something you get? You don't get a place, for example. You don't get an emotion. You get, like, a thing. And finally, it says, which I am not. So, it's describing a characteristic of some people, and he's saying he's not that. So, based on those clues, I want you to mark in the text, 1 to 4, where does it fit within the text, okay? I'll leave you a little bit of time, and then we will check. Alright, so let's start checking. At the beginning, very at the beginning, we find number one, which goes, Hi Aki, thanks for your postcard, coma, which I got this morning. That would be number three. In the next little sentence I marked, we have two. Two of the sentences marked in here. One. I guess what the city is more famous for is the museum dedicated to Pablo Neruda which is why I think artists love the place so much. Coma, who was a famous Chilean poet. The museum is okay, but unless you are a poetry fan, which I'm not, blah, 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 right? And finally, you can't come to Valparaiso without spending a day at the beach, which is where I'm going later with some friends, right? So, that's where our four sentences fit in. Now, let's move on to exercise 10. We have writing skill, paragraphing. So, of course, you should know what is a paragraph, what is paragraphing. Uh, we have letter A. The email on page 153 contains five paragraphs. Read the writing strategy box. What is the topic on, of each paragraph? Okay, so let's read the writing strategy text. Paragraphing. Paragraphs are a group of sentences which share a common topic. They help the reader follow the text. Period. Start a new par paragraph when you change topics. So every topic should have its own paragraph. That's like the common sense thing we have over here. Every time you do a text, a paragraph is what well, it's talking about one topic within the whole writing. So you have to be careful with that. Before you start writing anything, make notes. Then organize your notes into paragraphs. So any idea that you may have, you kind of want to sort them into like which little section is it going to go. And finally, decide on the best order for the paragraphs. Usually it's very straightforward. You have an introduction, then you kind of order the body, and then of course the conclusion is going to go at the end, right? So. The exercise continues, what is the topic of each paragraph? So, I want you to take your time and write in your book or in your notebook if you don't have space. What is the topic of each paragraph, all right? They already give us an example in exercise A, which is number one. Paragraph number one talks about the postcard that Aki sent. So, we have, hi Aki, thanks for your postcard, what a surprise, I never get postcards, and then I looked like a fun city. And it was great to hear your news. I'm glad everything is going well for you. I'm sorry this isn't a postcard, but you wanted me to tell you about Valparaiso. And yada yada, right? That is talking about the postcard that Aki sent. And of course, saying it's like an introduction. You know, like, hello, this is thing, and yada yada, right? So, 
please pause here and as I said, either in your book or in your notebook, write what do you think each paragraph has as a topic, okay? Okay, let's start checking this together. Paragraph two, I guess what the city is more famous for is the museum dedicated to Pablo Neruda. What is the topic, of course, talking about the museum, right? The museum the city is famous for. Next, we have what I really love about the city is its location, it's a mountainous and it's the ocean, yada yada. So, of course, paragraph three talks about the things you can do and see when you explore the city, right? And finally, you can come to Valparaiso without spending a day at the beach or fishing harbor, blah, blah, blah. So, paragraph four is about the beach and the harbor, of course. As usual, the number four is, number five is talking about meeting in the future, kind of a conclusion, you know, I hope you visit me here, uh, where I've been able to go and visit you, best, wish, best wishes, right, yada, yada, right? So, paragraph one and five are both the introductions and the conclusions, and the body is two, three, and four, as you can see, yes? So, based on this, this is very important for you to notice, paragraphs and ordering all your ideas, because that's what we're going to be doing for your writing. Write an email to a friend describing San Luis Potosí. Include the usual sites and the cultural attractions. Use your notes from the beginning of the class. Now, if you remember, you did this little activity in your notebook at the beginning of the class, right? That's going to come in handy. Now, what I want you to do is choose two to three places from your notes. From those ten things, you're going to try to choose the two or the three that you think are most interesting or the best, yes? And using four or five paragraphs, you are going to write an email to a friend, right? One as an introduction, you know, hi, how are you going? How are you doing? I hope you're fine. I have heard about you. You wanted to hear about my city, yada, yada, you know. Then one per place, one per thing that you want to talk about. Let's say the first one is the Labyrinth Museum. Well, this is the Labyrinth Museum. It's like this and that and yada, yada. Then another paragraph for another place and another paragraph for another place. Depends on how many places do you choose. If you choose two, then it's two paragraphs. If you choose three, then it's three paragraphs. And of course, one as conclusion. You have to say, bye. You know, I hope you like my letter. I hope to hear you for you soon. Yada, yada, right? We know we have some uh, introductions, introduction phrases and conclusion phrases, phrases in your book at some point. So that would be helpful. Remember, it's an informal email. Now, if the previous email was a bit more formal, this one is informal, yes, it's for your friend. Remember, you do not say, oh, my dearest friend, you know, you say hi. You use, you can be casual, you can use slang, you can use a lot of things just in the sake of informalness, okay? As usual, this is going to be a platform thing, so it has to be in a dot, doc, x, or doc format with an aerial or a calibre size 12 font. And interline space number one. That's just so all of them kind of look the same and you don't have any wacky things. Minimum 150 words, max 300 words. No, guys, you don't have to make it 300 words. I say max 300 words because I don't want to read. I don't want to read more than 300 words. I swear. Yes. Ideally, if you do four or three or five paragraphs, um, every paragraph that you do, it's like 50 words. So you should have like 250, maybe. If you do four, you can have 200. But like the bare minimum is 150, right? The text that you have as an example has about 245 words. So I think it's a good estimate. Of course, be careful with your spelling and punctuation. Those things are important. And finally, our deadline. The deadline is Wednesday, June 3rd at... 11.59, yes, a.m., of course, not p.m., so, oh, no, p.m., not a.m., sorry, so midnight, the moment it turns to Thursday, no more things, remember, the deadline and this whole thing is from the little platform, yes, we have a Google Classroom platform that 
I hope you have you are in it. Yes, we have been handling and it for the couple classes and these writings are going to be very important to take into consideration for us whether you pass or not because we're not making any tests per se it's very important that you do your writing so we can really determine if you pass or not like this is crucial even more now that we know we're not really returning to classes this is crucial so very important that you do give in your homework okay so that would be that and let's move on to what would be the next session. Next section. Hi guys, it's Abby again. This time to give you your homework from this week. So open your workbook on page 107. So the first two exercises just need the same audio. So first I'm going to explain you and then I'm going to play the audio. So in the first one, you have to look at the words involved in the sentences and correct the mistakes. Listen and check your answers. So you're going to read and then correct the words involved with another word. And in the next exercise, you're going to listen again. And you're going to choose if the sentence is asking for a recommendation, is given a recommendation or showing the reservation. So let's go on here. 1. The museum is a must-see. 2. It was all right, I suppose. 3. The new Bond movie is well worth seeing. 4. What did you think about it? 5. I highly recommend it. 6. You might like it if you don't have anything else to do. 7. Is it worth visiting? 8. I didn't think it was great. 9. I don't normally like musicals, but this one has a good story. 10. You won't want to miss this. 11. Is it any good? 12. You must go. 13. It'll appeal to anyone who enjoys thrillers. 14. It's worth watching. So now that you heard the audio, I'm going to give you one example for each exercise. So in exercise one, number one, the museum is a good see. As you heard, is not could see. They're using must see, and that's the answer for number one. Now let's go to exercise two. The sentences number one is giving us a recommendation, so we're going to use the letter G. So now let's go to exercise number three. Complete the conversation with the missing words or phrases, then listen and check your answers. So. First, you're going to see if you can answer any of them, and then you're going to check with the audio I'm going to play. What are we going to do this weekend? Well, what did you think about doing something outdoors? My cousin sometimes goes camping in the forest north of here. He says it's a must-see. There are small lakes and waterfalls and places to fish. I don't normally like camping. But that sounds all right. But oh, the weather forecast is for rain. Really? Is it worth going? I don't want to camp in that. No, well, maybe another time. He highly recommends it, though. If you like the idea, I'll send you the link. Great, thanks. But what about this weekend, then? A movie? Well, there's actually that new comedy they've been talking about. I saw it, actually. I would recommend it to people who enjoy that kind of thing, but it's not for everyone. Oh, hang on. You won't want to miss this. What? The new Bond movie comes out this weekend. We could go and see that. Is it any good? I saw the last one, and I didn't think it was great. Well, it was all right, I guess. Well, this review says it's well worth watching. Five stars. I don't know. Come on, 
You might like it if you don't have anything else to do. And then we can go to that new Brazilian restaurant on Queen Street. I went last week and it's so good. You have to go. Well, okay. That's Saturday figured out. What about the rest of the weekend? Why don't we play that new video game? I've played it and it's awesome. Well, I don't normally like video games, but if you say it's that good, I'll try it. Now, because I'm a good teacher, I'm going to give you one example. So number three, complete the conversation with the missing words or phrases, then listen and check your answers. So let's read. What are we going to do this weekend? B, well, blank, doing something outdoors. My cousin sometimes go camping in the forest north of here. He says it's a bleh. So the answer for the first one is going to be, what do you think about? So now you're going to do the same exact thing for all of them. Now for exercise number five, you're going to read the speaking test task below and make notes about how would you speak alone about the topic. Then listen to the same answer and compare your ideas. Now, with these prompts that are here, you, you, you can use your notebook if, if in the book there's no enough space. You're going to write some notes about how you're going to speak about this topic by yourself with no help. And then you're going to compare your ideas with the next audio. So my favorite place to go and relax is definitely the beach. I find the waves and looking at the sea very relaxing. In the summer, it's well worth spending the day there with friends. I highly recommend having a barbecue. And you have to take some music to create a fun vacation feeling. We go swimming, play games on the beach, and stay there in the evening chatting and laughing. In the winter, I also think the beach is a must-see, but for different reasons. The waves are bigger, it's colder, and the wind is stronger, but it's worth going to get some fresh air and think about things. The sunsets in the winter are wonderful, too. I think the beach appeals to anyone who needs to relax. You can watch the waves for hours. I'd recommend it to anyone who likes being outdoors. If you enjoy time to yourself or time with friends, you'll love spending time by the water. However, I wouldn't bother if you're someone who likes to be energetic and keep moving. It's a good spot for some sports in the summer, but the best thing is just watching the sea, the birds, and the sky. Now, in the next page, you're going to use exercise 6. Choose the correct option to complete the sentences. This one is pretty easy. You're just going to choose, and that's it. Let's go to the next one. So, in exercise number seven, it says, put the paragraphs in the correct order, one through six, to complete the email. So, we have letters A, B, C, D, E, and F, and you're going to put it in order by reading what does the letter says and saying, okay, so this one goes here and this one here, until you finish the six numbers that you have. Number eight, read here as Email again and match the two parts of the sentences. Two sentences endings are not needed. So we have numbers 1 through 6 and letter A through H. So in this ones we're going to, to match the number with the letter. So choosing one number with the correct ending. You're not going to use two sentences, so be careful about your answers. And now, last but not less important, number nine. Read the passage and then listen to the lecture. Summarize the points made in the lecture, making sure to explain how they oppose the specific points made in the written passage. So, I'm going to play an audio. And with that audio, you're going to summarize the important points that they say. And then, you're going to use those points to explain how they opposed with the points that are here in your book in the written passage. So let's hear the audio. While the radio may have suffered a decline some decades ago, it has enjoyed a renewed popularity in more recent years. The radio is an excellent example of successfully adapting to changing times. 
Instead of being killed off by new technologies, it has found ways of working with them. For example, digital radio, DAB, is now used in over 40 countries worldwide. Launched in the 1990s, some satellite radio stations teamed up with major celebrities and have enjoyed tremendous popularity in the US in particular. Secondly, choice is a wonderful thing. Thousands of online radio stations mean that people all over the world can find and listen to exactly the kind of broadcasting that suits them. And an interesting thing has started to happen. We are actually seeing a return to traditional radio at the moment. Music lovers are going back to stations where they can enjoy a sense of community because of a shared interest. In fact, when plans were announced some years ago to close down the BBC channel Six Music, the public complained so much that the plan was dropped. But radio stations are more than ways to play music. With the surprising popularity of podcasts over the past 10 years or so, radio has found a new energy. To be clear, podcasts don't strictly need radio stations. A podcast is simply an audio show that can be created and distributed by anyone. But radio stations have identified a winning opportunity to offer their own programmes as podcasts which listeners can access and play at their own convenience. Like This American Life, a weekly programme broadcast on national public radio in the US to over 2 million listeners every week, and then downloaded by close to 2.5 million more people and listened to as a podcast for free. Suddenly, radio is exciting again. While the radio... And that's all for today, guys. So remember to do your homework and see you the next time. Hello, guys. I'm Monza, and today we are going to review your homework of last week, pages 104 and 105. Workbook. So the first exercise is listening. Exercise 11 and the instruction is listen to a tour guide in Paris, France, and match the statements with the photos A, B, or C. So, number one, letter B. Number two, the answer is letter A. Number three, C, four, A, five, B, six, C, seven, A, and number eight, letter B. Exercise 12, listen to the talk. What is the speaker's purpose? The answer is letter C, to give a detailed description. Exercise 13, listen again. Match the adjectives with the nouns. Number one, chili, with letter G, air. Number two, ghoulish looking, with letter I, skull. Number three, creep, with letter D. Creepy sorry with letter D tunnels. Number four, infamous with letter J guillotine. Number five, famous with letter E buildings. Number six, artistic with letter B patterns. And number seven, threatening with letter A door. Number eight, a spiral with letter H, staircase. Number nine, frightening with letter C, welcome. Letter, uh, number ten, sorry, spooky with letter F, gallery. Exercise 14, listen again and choose the correct answers. To the questions. So, number one, what place is being described? Letter, letter C, the catacombs. Number two, how does it feel down there? Letter A, cool. Number three, where did all the bones come from? Letter B, 
the cemeteries. Number four, in what year, in what year were the bones moved to the tunnels? Letter A, 1786. Number five, who ordered the bones to be arranged into artistic patterns? Letter A, Napoleon I. Number six, what language is the same in? Letter C, French. Number seven, what kinds of bones are described as smiling? Letter B, skulls. And number eight, what do people sometimes try to steal? Letter C, bones. Exercise 15 and 16. Okay, so first 15. Choose the correct relative pronouns to complete the sentences. Choose dash where a relative pronoun is not needed. So the first one. Did you just play that song that you like? Number two, it's a special keyboard. That is the sign to be more comfortable. Number three, when we go to Lima, we're going to visit the gallery Dash John told us about. Number four, is that the woman who discovered those valuable paintings? Number six, it was a surprise to see a museum. Which further digital images? Number six, the paintings that the museum owns are not for sale. Number seven, my favorite poster is of a painting that I saw at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Number eight, she's the artist who is going to teach a class here next month. Guys, remember, we use which for animals, objects, and ideas. We use who for people, and that for animals, objects, ideas, and people. Exercise 16, read the sentences. Are the relative pronouns necessary or unnecessary? Write N for necessary or U for unnecessary. Number one, the musicians that opened the concert had been playing together for five years. That is necessary. Number two, the drummer uses a kit which her father bought her for her 16th birthday, which is unnecessary. Number three, the singer who writes songs for the band is also a poet, who is necessary. Number four, together they make musicians, they make, sorry guys, together they make music that speaks to young people around the world. That is necessary. Number five, the song that we just heard is one of the most popular ones. That is Larry E. So is unnecessary. Number six, when they first start, they play in a small club, which is their friend owner. So which is unnecessary. Number seven, the keyboard player also designs the t-shirts that are for sale at each show. That is necessary. And number eight, anyone who didn't get a ticket will have to listen on the radio. Who is necessary? Remember, the relative pronouns are necessary when we have a verb after the relative, okay? And unnecessary when we have a subject after the relative pronoun. Exercise 17. Put the words in, correct, in the correct order to complete the sentences with relative clauses. So, number one, the answer is, which has many famous paintings by Latin American artists. Number two, which focuses on Polish modern artists. Number three, which includes painters for, from many different European and South American countries. Number four, 
The answer is who paints colorful murals all over the world. Number five, who has known for his paintings of famous and important people. And number six, that sometimes hosts exhibitions up uh, for of up and coming artists. Okay, exercise 18 and 19. Re uh, uh, exercise 18, the instruction is, read the sentences. Are the relative, yes, are the relative pronouns the subject or the object of the clauses? So we have to write S for subject and O for object. Number one. The bus which stops on the corner goes directly to the art gallery. This is subject. Number two, kids often spend a lot of time watching videos which they find online. It's object. Number three, a guy who I know from school is working at the ticket office. Is object. Number four, I bought a second handbook that has a excellent examples of impressionist art. The answer is subject. Number five, some films have char characters who you can really relate to. It's object. She's excited to see a play which is based on one of her favorite books. Is subject number seven, the movie theater which is near my house has luxury seats with tables. The answer is subject and number eight, she saw the documentary that she read about online. This is object. Remember, your relative pronoun is subject when it when it is followed by a verb and is an object when it is followed by another subject, okay? And finally, we have exercise 19. Combine the two sentences into one with the relative clause. Basically, in this exercise, we have two sentences that we must unit using the relative clause. So let's go to the second one. And the answer is the painter bought new paint brushes that or which the relative clause can be both well, well just one but we have two options that or which were made in italy number three the ancient romans decorated their homes with paintings that or which okay again we have two options were later discovered by archaeologists number four M.C. Escher was a famous graphic artist. We can use who or that. So, uh, M.C. Escher was a famous graphic artist who was from the Netherlands, okay? Or that was from the Netherlands, okay? Both are correct. Number five, the tango is a well-known dance. The dance is from Argentina and Uruguay. And the answer is the tango is a well known dance that or which, both are correct, is from Argentina and Uruguay. And the last one, number six, graphic novels are a new kind of literature that or which are enjoyed by kids around the world. Okay? So, guys. That's all. See you.